This is the Herbs and Stones liquid foam. It's an analog groove box, a monophonic semi-modular synthesizer, and it comes from the mountains of northern Italy. It's designed by a fellow named Gianluca Herbertson, who produces, in his own words, esoteric music machinery and noise paraphernalia. What I was really excited about with the synthesizer is its possibility as a sort of generative and sort of unpredictable rhythm generator that I could pair with a drum machine. Most drum machines, and the problem that I have with drum machines in general is that they can be so rigid and so stiff with only patterns of eight or 16 beats or whatnot. And you're really limited in that, I mean, especially coming from a world where I'm playing with a live drummer who's constantly changing the patterns, playing fills, things like that. It's nice to have something like a liquid foam, which is kind of just doing its own thing in the framework of the very steady and consistent rhythm of a drum machine. My day job is working at a small recording studio here in Brooklyn called Thump. Apart from recording, we also repair and restore vintage audio equipment. So that's what I've been doing for the past few years is just learning how to fix all these old broken machines. We do space echoes, we do Ampex preamps, we do synthesizers, we do pretty much everything we can get our hands on. And so from working at that job, I've gained a lot of knowledge about just generally how to work with electronics. And naturally from there, because I already had an interest in synthesizers, I wanted to start building my own stuff. It started with the Simple City Drone, which is a nine-voice drone synthesizer. I built two of them to complement the Seat Lombard plum butter that I recently got. And I was really enjoying using them as a sort of bed of sound for my compositions. I had already had some experience with doing music and composing music outside of the box when I did an album last year based almost entirely around uh, the cassette medium and using the Tascam Porta Studio that I had as a mixer, as a recorder, and as a performance tool. And so I wanted to create a, a, a slightly more involved setup that I could make music on completely independent of my computer. Um, so I had gathered a few of the things I already had lying around, and you know, every time I wanted to make music, I would just have to plug them all together, find a power strip, etc. This just this just took too long and took a lot of energy out of the creative process. So what I decided to do is I would just go and build myself a little setup in, in my bedroom that I could just roll out of bed, literally, and sit down on and just start making music. And that took the form of a very simple table that I just built out of scrap wood laying around the studio. So I'd already built the synthesizer, and then I'd built this table, and I was looking for another project. And I stumbled upon the Herbs and Stones liquid foam. Um, and I saw that he had a DIY version of the project, which I thought was really exciting, because it kind of combined the two things I was working on at the time, which was building these small synthesizers, and then also starting to work with wood in a very basic way. So I ordered the kit, which is literally just the front panel and the PCB, got all the parts from Mauser, got some knobs from Modular Addict, a great store for just random DIY stuff. That's also where I get all my banana cables from. And so I just went down to the studio, and with little to no plan of how I was actually going to put this all together, I just started building the thing. So as you can see, I just started with the chips and basically worked my way from those down to the smallest components uh, and just put the whole thing together. It took me about maybe two or three hours. I just listened to a few podcasts and just kind of enjoyed the zen time uh, putting together uh, a synthesizer that I was really excited about. After I assembled the PCB, put the jacks in the front panel and got the pots in place, I decided it was time to start playing around with the thing.
I ended up messing around with it for another 10, 15 minutes after that. Um, and then I had to stop and say, wait a second, wait a second, you have to build a box. It took me a few tries to cut all the wood to the proper length. As I really don't have a lot of experience with this, I didn't realize at first that the width of the saw blade needs to be taken into account when you're measuring and when you're placing the blade when you're cutting the wood. So I ended up cutting a few pieces that were too short and it just took me a long time and it was a big mess and there was lots of sawdust. It was not pleasant, but it was a good learning experience. After that, I went to assemble the whole thing, and it was looking like it was going to go pretty well until I decided to drill the holes for the power jack and the output jack. I wasn't using countersinks, which I didn't even know was a thing at the time. So what I ended up doing is going moving too fast because I was very impatient, as I always am, and I ended up just breaking the thing. So I came back the next week with a little more knowledge and a little more of a plan and ended up putting something together that worked out pretty well. Unfortunately, as this whole project seemed to be mired by strange issues, a lot of the footage I had recorded was corrupted from my second build. So I can only show you the final product. So with the whole thing together finally working, it's time to see how well it plays with others. The synthesizer itself is based around two four-part sequencers that can modulate each other, they can modulate the pitch of the oscillator, they can modulate the envelope generator, and they can also be controlled by an LFO that I think seems to interact with one of the two sequencers. So much fun to just twist the knobs on this thing and immediately hear very interesting shifts and changes in the sound. And it can get super squarky, it can get super clicky and beepy. It has a very large range of sounds despite being relatively simple. What I also really like about it is that despite I think that there is a place for atonal synthesis in experimental music, especially, I mean, coming from using the plum butter a lot, I mean, you're not going to get traditional Western scales out of that thing. But with the liquid foam, what I really like is that it is limited to seven pitches, and it gives you this sort of, like, rounded feel of, like, okay, we're in this world of strange dance music that is just kind of, like, a little bit to the left of what you would expect uh, from a bass line or from a lead line or from any sort of groove element in a dance track. in building your own liquid foam, I suggest you head over to the Earth and Stones website. There's still some kits available uh, based on what it says there. And if you're not really into the whole DIY thing and you don't want to try to spend eight hours in a day trying to make a box, uh, you can just buy one <laughs> straight from Gianluca. And they're very reasonably priced and they are just so much fun to play around with.